So good morning. It's great to see you guys on this Memorial Day weekend. Um, I think that it's appropriate for us to take a moment just to uh, to say a prayer for all of the families throughout the year, uh, throughout the years who have lost loved ones serving in the in the armed forces, um, because really um, it is devastating for them. Uh, so let's let's do that and ask God to comfort them. Uh, if you're visiting, uh, I just want you to know my name is Randy Whittemore. This is my wife Ashley. We're the pastors here at Oasis. We have a saying around here, and it goes like this: that God loves you just as you are, and not as you should be, because none of us are as we should be. But He loves us way too much to leave us just as we are. We believe that here. So we're glad that you joined us this morning. Would you join us in prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you're doing in our nation. We thank you, Lord, that you have not abandoned the earth, but that you are actively engaged in your creation. Lord, this morning we do lift up all of those families who have lost men and women, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, husbands and wives in the armed forces serving to protect and to serve our nation. God, would you comfort them as they remember? Would you send your spirit of peace? Would you send your spirit of joy? Lord, I ask that you would be with them this morning. Now, Father, we ask that you come into this place this morning, that you would meet with us. I pray, Lord, that you would meet us right where we're at, that you would do the things that you want to do, that you would say the things that you want to say. Father, this morning, we ask that you would have your way. We ask that your spirit would be poured out mightily. Lord, come in power this morning. Lord, where there is healing that is needed, let your healing virtue flow. Where people need to be encouraged, Lord, I pray that this morning that they would be encouraged. Lord, I pray that this morning that your spiritual gifts would flow freely in this place. Lord, consume us. Let our thoughts be your thoughts. Let our heart be your, your heart. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship. somebody here or a few of you guys are just tired like something is oppressing over you guys one of the reasons I love 
this uh, the message on, on this specific verse is because he says, come and I'll show you how it's done. Walk with me and I'll show you. He doesn't say, go pray. He goes, come with me. Walk with me. I'll show you. that we can all come together as one and pray for each other. There is power in prayer. The God wants to show your Nebuchadnezzar that he can get you through that burning furnace. Your God wants to show you that he can split the sea. Your God is ready to come to you and shut the mouth of the lions. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's, uh, it's great to see you guys here. Um, you guys can be seated. I was just asking the Lord for a word for the church, and now I'm kind of convicted. Maybe it's just for me. I don't know. But um, as Jesus was talking about to um, Peter, you know, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, and he, have we often thought like that's just for the pastors, or that's what God was calling Peter to lead the church? But I think I tend to take everything that He told them to be. You know, it's my responsibility to do that too. And what does it mean? And um, so when I was asking for a word today, he brought me to Ezekiel 34. And, and at the beginning of it, God is condemning the shepherds and saying, Woe to you, shepherds, because you have not fed the flocks and you've been eating and feeding yourselves and not taking care of the sheep. And my sheep have become a prey. And then he goes and says all these things that they didn't do. But then later, he says, I am going to be the shepherd. And he says, I will feed my flock, and I will make them lie down. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away. Bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. And I think he's saying to me about Peter that this is what he's asking us to do when we're feeding the sheep and feeding the flock, is to find those things that are lost in people's lives and bring back and heal them from the broken. A lot of like what Rick Evans was talking about in the Broken Heart um, book and conference. And he's promising to us that he will feed us. But I think it's our responsibility too to be feeding and watching over our sheep, who's your little flock that you have, the disciples that we're leading in and bringing. Amen. Thank you, Amy. Hey, let's take a minute and let's let's pray. <laughs> into us. Holy Spirit, come fill us, fill our minds this morning, fill our hearts, fill our minds and our hearts with your words, fill them with your peace, with your joy. Holy Spirit, have your way in us, illuminate the darkest places. 
illuminate our hiddenness. Holy Spirit, come. We belong to you, and this morning, Lord, we commit our time, our energy, our minds, our bodies, our spirits to you. And let your light shine brightly in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, uh, thanks. This is Zach. Uh, he's on loan to us. Thank you for helping us this morning and playing drums. <laughs> um, it's, uh, what a great uh, weekend we had last weekend with the, broke, uh, with the uh, heal, Healing an Orphan Heart uh, Conference with Rick Evans. I just want to take a minute to uh, say thank you to everyone that worked so hard to make that a success. Um, thank you to, um, to Steve Winter and his video team uh, that uh, took those three sessions and... They're all online already, so um, if you haven't had a chance, I would encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel um, and uh, watch those three sessions and uh, watch them over and over again, because um, I think it was really good, really good stuff. And thank you to all the folks who led worship during those three sessions, uh, to Jose and the team, and Imelda and Jazair and the team. Um, I know it's a sacrifice to do all of that, but thank you guys for giving of your time for those three sessions. I just felt like it was a, it was a, it was a great success. And thank you to. I want to take a moment to take. A, I want to give a special thanks out to somebody who um, just does things behind the scenes, and if she sees something that needs to be done, she just does it. And uh, throughout that uh, conference, um, she was she really stepped her game up. And so I just want to say thank you uh, to Lucy, wherever she is. Um, oh, there she is. Uh, thanks, Lucy. Really appreciate that. Um, thanks so much. You don't know how much that stuff means. It means that I get an extra minute. Um, and... Uh, or two, but thank you very much. Thank you to all of our volunteers um, who served throughout that conference. It was uh, it was so good, and um, and I'm so thankful. Um, I believe that there's a life changing message on the horizon this morning. So the sooner we get started, the sooner your life will change. <laughs> Hey, uh, I just want to say um, really quick, I know it's Memorial Day weekend, a lot of folks are out, um, and, and May is always our slowest month as far as um, church attendance goes and things, but I want to say you guys have been doing an excellent job showing up in May, even though there's the proms and the graduations and the Mother's Day and the Memorial Day, um, you guys are a highly committed church family, and I think it's because you guys like each other, so um, I'm, uh, I'm so excited about that, and I also want to say that our, um, our income has been up, I mean, it just continues to grow, and uh, so I want to encourage you guys to keep giving. Let's end May with a big bang. Um, I'm just excited. God is up to some really great things here at Oasis. Do you believe that? Um, do you believe that? <laughs> um, I believe it too. So thank you guys for your commitment, for your dedication, for your faithfulness. Um, uh, I know that um, God is blessing all of us. Um, Keep Tim Young in your prayers. His mother passed away um, over the weekend. Uh, if you have his contact information on Facebook or cell phone, send him a message of encouragement, um, if you don't mind. Um, he may not respond, but that's okay. Um, he just needs to feel our support as a church family. If you don't know who Tim Young is, he's the guy who usually plays the bass over here. Um, he looks like the Wolverine. Um, <laughs> Hugh, what's his name? Hugh Jackman. He sort of looks like that. Is that his name? 
How many of you guys saw the Star Wars already? Really? Uh, man, I can't believe it. Nobody. We're going to have to change our name. We're no longer the first geek Orthodox church. <laughs> All right. Okay. Are you ready for the Word of God? Are you passionate about the Word of God? Do you believe that the Word of God can and will change your life? Amen. Amen. I believe that too. Uh, this morning's message, I had some, I, I had difficulty titling it and I went with follow me because it's really, it's a message about trust, it's a message about surrender, um, but I don't think that we can have any of those things unless we decide we're going to follow Jesus, unless we decide that we're really going to follow his teachings and his ways. And so um, trusting in God is such a complicated thing. Why, have you ever wondered why it's so, so much more complicated than, than, than it should be? You know, it's hard to trust God with our life, isn't it? I mean, if we're being honest. I mean, uh, we hear the term all the time when we're going through difficult times. Maybe you've gotten counsel from a, uh, a, a, a fellow brother or sister in the faith, and they say to you something like, you just need to trust God. Any of you ever get that? Or maybe you've heard something like this, or, you know, brother, you know, sister, God is in control. Have you ever heard that? I've heard those things a lot, and really, I don't know how to unpack those things. I don't really know what they mean, so I decided that in this message, we would try to uh, unpack those things. Trust God. God is in control. Surrender your life to Him. And I don't know about you, but um, if God is really in control, then I have to believe that He knows what He's doing. I don't always have to question Him. I don't know uh, if you've ever had a season in your life where you felt like you weren't going to make it. I mean, you've been really going through it. Has anybody experienced that sort of thing in your life where you just don't know if you're going to make it? You can't do it on your own. You ever come to that place? And, and I don't know if you're like me. Do you ever find yourself just randomly singing the song from Carrie Underwood, Jesus Take the Wheel? <laughs> That's just me. How does that song go? Does it be? <laughs> you guys are just, y'all aren't going to do it, are you? <laughs> you do not want to admit uh, that you guys used to sing that song. You know which song I'm talking about, though? <laughs> no, just you do. Jesus, take the wheel. You're just like, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> and that's how you feel anyway. And so maybe now when you go home, you're going to hear that song in your head going on. But maybe you've been in that place where you just know you can't do it anymore. You're just like, God, I, I need you. And you just slowly hear him whisper in your ear that you know, it's about time. It's about time. I think that's what God is waiting for us to do. Not to sing that song, but to say, Jesus, I need you to help me. I need you in my life. How many of you guys like to fly in, you know, airplanes? You, I got to watch my words with you guys. Y'all are so, you, you guys, um, Ash and I, we used to fly once or twice a year, different conferences, things like that, and um, I hate flying. It is the worst thing. And I, I've always, and Ashley just loves it. She's just, yeah, we're going to get on the plane, we're going to fly. And she wants to have a conversation on the plane. Little does she know, I've already taken like three Dremamine and I'm out. You know, I don't, I don't like it. I don't want to think about it. The takeoff, the turbulence, the landing, and when that plane just sort of drops out of nowhere. And, uh, I can't stand it. And I, and I started wondering, why do I hate flying so much? And so many people love to fly. I hate it so much that we took a trip to... Anaheim, California, and we, did, we drove the entire way with four kids. That's how much we hate flying. How much I hate flying. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Oh, Jesus, heal my orphan heart. <laughs> I, 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 I do. I, I don't like flying at all. And so... I started thinking about that because we've got a, a trip coming up next week um, to New Orleans, only six hours, but like if you flew, you get there in no time. Um, and I just said, mm, we're going to drive. Um, and um, I think the reason, 
part of the reason why I hate flying is because I have no control over the circumstances. I have to depend on the pilot. I have to depend on the airplane's navigation system. I have to depend on air traffic control that they're not going to run us into another airplane. I have no control over it, and I have to depend on people like Mark McNair to make sure that I have the supplies I need on the plane. But it's all about depending on others. And I struggle with depending on others. It's that control thing. And I said, yeah, I don't have a control issue. And God's like, yeah, you do. Um, so, <laughs> so I think that the struggle for control of our circumstances is really one of the central conflicts of human life. Control gives us the illusion of stability and happiness. But it's just an illusion. We only find peace when we let go of our desire for control. The process of surrendering, I think, begins by deciding who it is that we can trust, who it is that we can depend on. And so I want to take you to one of the, my favorite passages in the Gospels. And you're going to find it in Matthew 8. If you want to turn there on your device or your Bible, um, go ahead and do that. If not, we're going to have it up here for you to follow along. You just have to trust that I put the, the actual scripture up there. So we'll begin in uh, verse 18, Matthew um, chapter 8. And I'm going to try to read it a little slower than I normally do. Some folks say, man, you read through those scriptures so fast, I don't get a chance to, to catch those. So um, Matthew verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 18. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross the, to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus had pretty much achieved rock star status at this point. He had been performing miracles and, uh, you know, casting out demons and healing the sick, and, and people had heard of Jesus, and so crowds were coming around him, and this teacher of the, of the law said, I will follow you wherever you go. And so Jesus replied in verse 20, he said, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. I think what Jesus is saying here is that it's not going to be a smooth sailing. If you decide to follow me, life is not going to be as smooth as you think it is. There is a price that you're going to pay to follow me. I, I love it when uh, secular folks say, oh, Christians are just weak-minded. You know, it's the weak-minded people. And I look at the Gospels, and I look at the epistles, and I think, you have to be strong <laughs> to follow Jesus. There is a certain strength that is required to follow Jesus. There's a certain cost and a certain price that you are going to pay to follow Jesus. And so Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Jesus, <laughs> he was quite the pastor, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> he said, just leave him, come and follow me. Come and follow me. And then in verse 23, it says, Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. You guys notice the theme so far? They followed him into the boat. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping through this storm. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. Have you ever been there? And the storms of life and the sea of life, have you ever felt like you're, you're sinking? Have you ever felt like you're drowning? And so all you can do is cry out and say, Lord, save me. And sometimes when we're going through life and we're going through life storms, it feels like Jesus is asleep. Doesn't it? 
It seems like there's no relief. It seems like there's no hope on the horizon. Sometimes when we're going through life storms, we are consumed by those circumstances. And that's all we can focus on. Jesus was asleep. They thought they were going to drown. In verse 23, it says, Then he got into the boat and his disciples... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> In verse 26, he replied, you of little faith, <laughs> there he goes again, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. What are you going through today? Don't you wish Jesus would just come and rebuke the winds and the waves of your life so that you could have some calmness? So that you could have a little bit of peace, maybe a little bit of peace in your marriage, maybe a little peace in your finances, maybe a little peace at work, maybe a little peace with your kids. I don't know what it is, but don't you wish that Jesus would just come in and rebuke the winds and the waves of life so that it would just bring calmness? I don't know what you're going through. And so in verse 27, it says, The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and waves obey him. Let me tell you something. When you decide to follow Jesus into the boat and Jesus hoists up those sails, you're going to probably hit a storm or two in your life. When you follow Jesus, it doesn't mean you're not going to have any trouble. It means that you're gonna, God's going to take you through some stuff. But you don't have to worry because Jesus is in the boat with you. And Jesus has the power to rebuke the winds and the waves. You don't have to be afraid. And Jesus, he, he was so frustrated with the disciples. He said, man, you guys of little faith, how come it is that you don't depend on God and trust that I am who God says that I am? Why is it that you still struggle and that you're still so fearful? Don't you know that I am in this boat and I have a purpose and a mission that I have a destiny to fulfill? Don't you know who I am yet? Haven't you seen me perform all these miracles? Haven't you seen me cast out demons and raise the dead? Haven't you seen all of these things, these things happen? And you're afraid that you're going to drown? I'm in the boat. I'm with you. Who are you placing your trust in? You know, we trust in a lot of different things. Many of us trust in the systems of the world. That's what we depend on, our education, you know, the systems of the world tells you, well, if you get educated, if you get a degree, then you're going to start out with a $60,000 a year job. Um, but how many of you know that the, the millennial generation has found out that that's not true? <laughs> I know uh, plenty of students who have graduated high school and went straight into the workforce. And four years, five years later, after their friends have graduated college, um, they're making um, far more than what their educated friends are making. And they're, I mean, I'm, I'm not against education. Don't hear me say that. I'm just saying we can't depend and trust in the world system. The world system will lead us astray. The government, how many people do you know that depend on the government? We can't depend on the government. The world systems, many people who are tr depending and trusting on others. And, and a lot of us depend on self. Well, I can't trust anybody, so I'm just going to have to do it myself. How many of you ever said that before? It's all up to me. Just one, me, two. Two of us said, I'm going to do it on my own. My own desires, my own passions, my own ambition, my own agenda. I'm just going to trust and depend on myself, and I'm just going to go down that road. How many of you know that when we depend on ourselves, that means we oftentimes let ourselves down? And then we can follow Jesus. We can follow his ways. We can follow his teachings. We can follow his spirit. We can follow his instruction. And his ways are better than our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. And if we would only lean on him, we would understand that even though we go through stuff, he has a greater plan in store, a plan that is going to make sure that my life glorifies his name, a plan that makes sure that I am a testimony of the goodness of God. It's not an easy way, but it's the best way. 
And so we have to surrender our lives to Christ. We have to surrender our minds and our hearts to depending solely on Jesus. In Luke 17, Jesus says, all who are obsessed with being secure in life will lose it all. Isn't that scary? Aren't we a culture of pursuing security? Including their lives, he says. But those who let go of their lives and surrender them to me will discover true life. If you don't know what your purpose is, if you, have, if you struggle with, with the meaning of life, if you find yourself in these debates, these philosophical debates of the meaning in life and my purpose and those kinds of things, it's because you haven't found true life. True life is found in Jesus. But we have to surrender our life to him to find that true life. We have to surrender our will and our desires. This stuff doesn't sound fun. How many of us, when we're going through those storms of life and we feel like that we're drowning, we pray like Jesus prayed. Do you remember when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was about to go to the cross to be crucified and he said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup of agony away from me. How many of us that? But we stop there, don't we? I mean, that, we, we put on the brakes right there. Father, if you're willing, take this away from me. But look what Jesus went on, and he said, but, but, no matter what, your will must be mine. See, we stop instead of continuing on, but your will, your will be done. And this is some flesh dying stuff in Galatians 5 Paul says keep in mind that we who belong to Jesus the anointed one have already experienced crucifixion for everything connected with our self life was put to death on the cross and crucified with the Messiah we must live in the Holy Spirit and follow after him follow after him the purest way to trusting and depending upon God is surrendering our lives and following him following him are you convinced though that God is a good father I mean are you convinced have you been persuaded that God is good I know many of you in this room, you know that that is true because God has blessed you. God has been good to you. God has seen you th through some very difficult times in life. And so you can testify and you can say, yes, God is a good father. But how many of you know that there are, very, there are many people who believe that God is not a good father, that God is out to crush them and to squish them like an ant just waiting for them to mess up? That's the perception that many people have of God. And if, it, if that is the perception that you have of God, then you can never fully follow him and trust him because you're just waiting for him to bring down the hammer. Isn't that true? So the first step, you have to believe that God is a good father and that he has good things planned for you. I like what the psalmist said in Psalm 27. He said, my heart will not be afraid even if an army rises to attack. I know that you are there for me, so I will not be shaken. He knows something about God. He knows something about the Father. He knows something about the character of God. He knows that God will be there. He knows that God has, will be there because God has been there for him in the past. And he says, I will not be shaken. Even though I'm in the boat and the waves and the wind is roaring, even though I'm about to drown, even though I don't see any way out, even though I've been hurt and wounded, and I don't know if I can, take, if I can even get up in the morning, even if I know I can't pay my bills, I will not be shaken. Because I know of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. We have to be sure of that in order to fully trust and depend on God. He is a good father. 
I like how they say in some churches when they say, God is good. Oh, Wait a minute now. <laughs> you, guys, you guys have been around the block a time or two, haven't you? <laughs> you believe that. God is good. Oh, Amen. Man, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost all of a sudden. <laughs> you have to be convinced of that. You have to place your trust, your faith. In that, in the idea that God is good and that he has good things in store for you. The psalmist says it this way, but you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in, on behalf of your servant. The psalmist knew that God was a compassionate God. And you read the Old Testament. Has, has anybody ever read the Old Testament here? A couple people. <laughs> hey, listen. The Old Testament, when you just read it at face value, it doesn't seem like God's very compassionate, is it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but here we have a psalmist living in those days, and he says about the Lord that he is compassionate and he's gracious, that he's slow to anger abounding in love and faithfulness. We have to surrender to that idea of a good, compassionate, loving father. That's the God that we want to follow. That's the God that we place our trust in. And the process of surrendering that control we were talking about in the beginning, it begins by deciding who we can trust. Who are you trusting? I just love it. I just get a bunch of scriptures. Psalm 28. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy. And with my song, I praise him. I mean, how many of you guys just walk around saying things like this? People that you know, I mean, people at your job, at your, at your workplace, people at school, be in the grocery store, you run into people, you just start saying stuff like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, challenge you all that this week I want you to just tell somebody, the Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart trusts in him, and he helps me, my heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise him. And then I want you to tell me what they say. I think that I think that would be amazing. It's an experiment. I see some of you are like, there ain't no way I can do that. Um, but there is something about people, there's something about people who fully trust in God. I, I know these kinds of people. It seems like they have this gift of faith, and they just, they just sort of like leak trust and dependence upon God. You know, it's sort of opposite of some people that, I, that, I, that you might know, I don't know any, but that you might know that are just negative, and they're like, well, I guess God doesn't exist. <laughs> he didn't come through that time. He left me here all alone. I mean, you know, you know those types of people? I, I've never met any, but I, I imagine that you probably have met someone like that before. Oh, there's nothing more draining than that. But to hear people who have, and I love it when, when we don't have any old people here, but when you, we have people who are like 90 years of age plus, I consider that old, you know, 90 years, of, and, and they're still talking about God. They're still talking about how faithful and how good God is. And you know that they've had a lifetime of heartache and different things. And they're still saying, God is so good. Amen. It's because they're trusting in him. Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord. Yeah, I like this one. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, follow him in all your ways, and he will make your path straight. I, I, know, I know you probably know people like this. I don't know any, but there are people who are just, God, you know, they say, God gave me a brain. I can figure it out myself. I don't need the Spirit of God to lead me. I don't need to look into the Scripture. I can think about this. I don't know why I'm talking like that, but <laughs> it's because I don't know anybody like that. But I would imagine if I knew somebody like that, that's the way that they would talk. 
<laughs> and so they're like, you know, depending on self is really what they're doing. Their own intellect, their own logic, their own reasoning, and they're depending on that. And you know from their life that that's not really working out for them. And then you can just, you can just tell them Proverbs. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But instead, we're to depend on the wisdom of God the direction of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I wonder what you need to surrender control of today. Where is it in your life that you really need to trust God? And you struggle with that, like, I can trust God in all these different areas, but there's this one area that I just really struggle trusting God. I don't, I don't know what it is for you. I mean, it could be, like we talked about earlier, it could be your finances, it could be your marriage, it could be your parenting, you know, relationships, friendships. I don't know what it is. But you know, that area that you really need to surrender, maybe it's sin in your life. Maybe there's something that you've been doing, some addiction that you just can't kick and you just need to trust the Lord. You just need to trust Him in that area of your life. What area do you need to surrender to him today? I have some steps to help us to trust God, depend on God, to surrender to him a little bit more. Did I put those up there? One, two, three, four, five steps. Five step program for you. These are the practical applications to this message that should help you. I know it helps me. You know, there's been times in, in our life, I mean, we've been through the ringer, man, you know? I, I don't know if you've ever been there. We've been through the ringer, and, and we've got to that place where we had to decide whether or not we're going to keep pushing forward or if we're just going to give up and go a different direction. I don't know if you've been there before, but we've been there probably more than once. And we've decided, you know, we've just got to press into this thing. And there's a message that I preach sometimes. It's called Embrace the Pain. Everybody loves that message because everybody loves pain so much. But, but isn't it true, those of you who work out like I do, that um, if you... <laughs> my dad's like, yeah, the fork to the mouth. <laughs> Run into the refrigerator, you know. <laughs> My sister always says, if you see me running, you need to run because I'm not exercising. I'm running from something, you know. <laughs> but isn't it true that if you want to gain strength and muscle mass, that you're going to need to experience a little bit of pain? Your muscles are going to need to go through some transition. They're going to feel a little bit sore. Isn't that true? If you want to get stronger. I mean, I don't know why I brought that up. Oh, embracing the pain. Anyway, uh, life is full of pain. It's filled with pain, right? You might be going through pain right now. But I want you to know that God's going to see you through that. And you will be stronger because of that pain. I'm telling you right now, it may be painful. But there is another side to it. When you come out on the other side, you're going to be stronger. Unless you give up, then you, you're not. But we've had moments in our lives where we've had to decide, are we going to trust God or not? Are we going to depend on God or not? Do we believe that we are walking in God's plan and in his will, or do we not? I mean, it's as simple as that. Trust is a choice that you make. Now, you can look at all the circumstances and let that scare you into giving up and quitting. But I'm telling you that that's why the scriptures tell us to keep pressing on, to keep running your race, to not give up. That's why the, the scriptures tell us to be persistent because that persistence will grow maturity and character in your life. Don't give up. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing forward. Keep knocking. Keep asking. Keep seeking. And so we've had to decide to keep going. And here's the things that you have to do. And I say daily. And I'll even go as far as to say sometimes it's multiple times a day. Every day, I have to decide to surrender myself to, to God. Every morning, I have to say, not my will, <laughs> but your will. Right? That's a difficult thing to do. 
But every morning I have to say that. I have to pray that. Not my will, God, but your will today. Help me in that. And then secondly, confess daily. <laughs> you have to confess God's promises over your life every day. Especially if you're in, your, if you're in a place where you're going through some difficulties um, or, or you haven't experienced a lot of victory in, uh, in life. It's important that you confess God's promises over your life every day. You know, for me, it's like, dear Lord, I'm, <laughs> I'm the head and I'm not the tail. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. I'm more than a conqueror. I can do all things with Christ. God is with me. I am his beloved. I mean, I have to do these things daily. I have to do it daily. Confessing daily. Confessing God's promises and then putting God first every day God first there are some times like I'd want to do something you know my like I just want to shut down sometimes and maybe go play golf I haven't played golf in a while but yeah, I used to always go play golf and 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 the Lord would say mm, I, I got this other thing for you today um, and so I'd have to give that up and just go do what God told me to do. So we have to put God first. We have to put him first in our life. We have to put him first in our marriage. We have to put him first in our home life, at work. Make sure that we're putting God first daily. You can't just say today, uh, you know, I'm going to do this today, and then we'll see how it turns out three months from now. Every day you have to do these things. You have to be spirit-led every day. Every day, Father, what is your instruction for this, for this day? Is there anything specific? Is there anything special that you want me to do? And you might say, well, how do you get direction from the Holy Spirit daily? I'm going to tell you this one thing, that if you ask the Lord to lead you every day, there will be opportunities that pop in front of you every day. Every day, you'll see a need. Every day, the Lord will send somebody in your path. And I'm telling you, it's a dangerous prayer, but if you pray it, it's going to happen because the Lord's going to open your eyes to what's going on around you he's going to uh, he's going to in, he's going to inflame your heart for the, his passion and compassion for people who are hurting and in need all over the place i'm telling you if you want to be led by the spirit every day ask him to lead you every day every day lead me lord what do you want me to do i tell the story all the time about the time i wore a blue shirt didn't i tell this one recently how many of you have never heard the story of the blue shirt <clears throat> all right well that's worth it there's three people <clears throat> So, so, uh, so Zach, one morning, um, I, uh, I got up, and I was just getting dressed. This doesn't happen all the time, but uh, I heard the Lord tell me, wear a blue shirt. This is the most random thing that I've ever heard, right? So uh, I go into my drawer, and I have this blue shirt um, that it was, I don't know why it was, I had a Dodgers shirt, but I, it said Los Angeles on it and it had it had a number I can't even remember the number and so I put that on and and I go about my day and then I run into somebody that day and he says hey are you from LA and I said no <laughs> I'm not from LA and uh and uh he goes oh well why are you wearing that shirt and I said well it's an interesting story <laughs> um um I told him you know I felt like I needed to wear it today and I don't know why and um we ended up talking and led him to Christ that day but it would have been, I don't think that would have happened had I not listened to the Holy Spirit tell me to wear a blue shirt. How random is that? But I'm telling you, if you ask the Spirit of God to lead you every day, He will lead you. And He will open up opportunities for you. And then finally, we have to rest in God's love every day. We have to just rest in that place. I love the scripture that, um, that Jose shared during worship, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, and it's really amazing in the Passion Translation. Um, but um, Jesus is saying, if you're weary, come to me and I will give you rest. And, and, and he says, I will be your oasis. That's the scripture that we, that we stood upon to change the name of our church to Oasis. Uh, we wanted this to be a place where people could come and find, find real rest and, and rhythms of, of grace, you know? Not a place where you're pressured to do and become, but a place where you can come and experience God's spirit and his power and his love and just rest. 
You have to do that daily. How do you rest in God's love? I would say that one of the best ways to do that is to worship. Just spend time worshiping him. Just spend time worshiping him. In your car, on those commutes, you know, just block out all the traffic, those kinds of things. And just let him pour out his love on you. And just rest in that. Let that fuel the rest of your day. But this is a daily thing that we've got to do. These things will help us to trust and depend and surrender our lives to God. Amen? I want to um, give us a time to um, receive prayer and ministry. Um, maybe, maybe you feel like today that you know you you're in that boat and you feel like the disciples you do, you know, where you feel like you're you're about to drown. The wind is roaring and the waves are coming over into the boat. Um, it, it's probably a good day for you to get prayer. Um, and this morning, I'm just going to open up the front. And those of you who want to come and just surrender again and commit to trusting God, you spend time up here with him, uh, praying with God and or praying to God and worshiping and those kinds of things. Um, let his love just pour over you. There's a really sweet spirit um, here. Um, every, every time we come together, it's amazing, where it just feels like just what we need for that particular Sunday, the Lord just provides it. So, Whatever it is that you need this morning, I believe the Lord will provide that. Would you guys stand with me? We've got one song here um, for worship. Um, it's okay if you want to stay standing where you're at and do business with God. I believe God will meet you right where you're at. But if you want to come forward... Sometimes that's what it takes to say, God, I'm serious about this, you know. Um, I would encourage you to do that during this song. But I want to speak a blessing over you, and then we'll worship together. I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I bless you with eyes to see what the Father sees. I bless you with the ears to hear what the Father is saying. I bless you with the courage to follow him. I bless you with every spiritual blessing. I bless you with the wholeness and with the peace of God. May the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let's worship. If you need prayer or uh, you want to spend time with God, just come on up to the front. Responding with praise, yeah.